You will it. For an industry that didn't even exist eight years ago, the home video cassette business is doing okay. Just about $4 billion worth of okay this year and no limit in sight. We'll be examining the video business all this week, starting this morning in our Washington studio with Boyd Matson. Morning, Boyd. Good morning, Jane. A few years ago, people weren't sure the video cassette industry would amount to much. The tapes were priced at $99, and the industry just wasn't convinced that people would pay to see the same movie over and over. Well, typical of what has happened can be seen here at the Video Software Dealers Association in Washington, D.C. They have two convention halls at their annual convention filled with displays like this showing all the tapes available. Four years ago, 200 dealers showed up here. This year, more than 5,000. The growth is indicative of the overall explosion in the video business. The fight's over. The winner, home video cassettes. They've KO'd video disc, video games, even pay cable stations. And now they're going after the grand old entertainment champion, movie theaters. By the end of 1986, home video revenues are expected to exceed $4 billion. That's a few million more than first run films will earn on big screens. Home video is the most amazing medium that has ever been created because it lets the consumer access what they want when they want it at a very affordable price. VCRs, the video cassette players, are now priced as low as $150 and they're selling at the rate of one million a month. Making home video once a rare treat for the few, now daily fare for the many. These days there isn't anything you can't get on video. There's novelty. I'm the rock and I'm the bat. The baddest piece of granite that you've ever done. Parody. I don't understand what you're saying. Parlor games. Looks like we're all stuck here. Treasure hunts. Treasure was the name of the stallion. Music from opera to rock. <laughs> From tap to ballet. Uh, the long-term opportunity is in special interest areas, be they exercise, cooking, uh, children's video, music, classics. We have a number of operas and ballets, for example, that we offer. Uh, uh, we're seeing all of these areas expand in interest, and, and uh, it'll just be a question of being able to define from a business standpoint the target audience. But the field is still dominated by movies. They account for 70% of the video retail market. The prices for video rights to even marginal box office successes have soared. The Cotton Club may have lost money in theaters, but it sold to Embassy Video for close to $5 million. Vestron bought Pritzi's Honor, still struggling in theaters, for just over $4 million. And they'll make money on those cassettes. People will watch at home what they won't go out to see. With home video, you're going to rent it for $3. And, and uh, if you made a mistake or if you don't like the movie, you turn it off and go on to the next thing. Five years ago, movies could be bought for as little as $100,000. Today, it's multi-millions. The highest price ever paid for video rights went to The Empire Strikes Back. $12 million. But the profits are enormous. Gone with the Wind, the Star Wars Saga, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Tootsie have all earned additional millions from cassette sales. But it isn't just recycled movies. The fastest growing category is children's programs. Cassettes don't run out of patience when a four-year-old wants to hear that story one more time. Parents want these videos because it is a, a wholesome entertainment for their kid or is it also just a babysitter for the kids. I think it's both. There's no question it's a babysitter. I have enough friends that have kissed me on both cheeks because I've been able to let them take a look at the cassette. But it also is wholesome entertaining. It's an alternate viewing. Other successes include how-to videos, teaching everything from tennis to buying wine, music videos priced to sell rather than rent. And now you can care enough to send the very best via video. Happy birthday. 
These days, cassettes are available everywhere, video stores, certainly. But how about tapes next to the groceries? And if that's too much trouble, you can now buy videos like you buy soft drinks. There are 400 new titles a month coming out competing for your attention. That means that some of them aren't going to make money. The rest of this week, we will examine those that do sell well, starting tomorrow with music videos. Jane? All right, Boyd, thanks. Bryant will be back with a Major League Baseball player who's been pleading temporary insanity for 18 years. After a message. Boy, here is Jane Pauling. Thank you, Will. And Boyd Matson continues his look at the video explosion this morning with music videos. What makes a good one, what makes a bad one, and what they're making of the music industry. live on stage in your living room Bruce Springsteen but all we can talk and about Prince Sting Tina Turner It doesn't matter if you can't get tickets to the concert, you can now see all your favorite singers on home video. The number one selling video in the country last week was a music video, We're the World. Six of the top 20 sellers were music videos. It's a success story even the marketing departments at record companies didn't envision. The sales of music videos means people are basically buying commercials for records. I have to sort out what the videos are for. I mean, that frankly, they are no more in the majority of cases. Um, commercials for the new song or new album or whatever. Last year, this is in 84 early, I, I looked at my royalty statements and there was an unaccountable peak in an album which had been pretty much sleeping. And I, I tried to find out why this had happened. I shipped about 150,000 extra albums, and it related directly to two weeks after MTV had shown a, my video. And uh, so I think it, it does have a tremendous result. Their proven success makes a video essential with the release of a new album. Record companies spend an average of $35,000 to $50,000 to produce a video of one song. For more successful artists, they will go as high as $100,000. The most expensive music video was Thriller, and the making of Thriller at $1 million. Sales to the home market more than covered the cost. Music videos are not big rental items. People are buying them like albums, and they're priced to sell often under $20. And what are people getting for their money? Occasionally, innovative video techniques. The little pig knows what to do. He's silent and quick, just like all of us win. Live and die. I lost my power in this world. But the majority of music videos are stuck in the rut of repetitive images.